Hi guys, my name is Tiffany and I am an alumni of this beautiful school, Eastern Nazarene College. Yeah, thank you to the chaplain's office for inviting me to do this devotional. I'm really excited about it. And so we're going to jump into it. Um, so the scripture that I'll be using for my devotional today is Isaiah chapter 1, verse 17. And it reads, Learn to do right, seek justice, defend the oppressed, take up the cause of the fatherless, plead the case of the widow. Okay, so right now what I want you to do is I want everyone, everyone close your eyes for a second. Everyone close your eyes. And imagine and think about everything that's going on in the world right now. Think, think about the wildfires in California. Think about COVID-19. Think about the families who are mourning deaths from COVID-19. Think about the family of George Floyd. Think about the family of our queen, our black queen, Breonna Taylor. Think about being back in school and during a time of COVID. You thinking about it? And in the midst of all of this, what are we Christians supposed to do? In the midst of all the chaos and all the hurt and pain in the world, the Bible tells us to learn to do what is right, to seek justice, to defend the oppressed, to take up the cause of the fatherless, plead the case of the widow. In the midst of so much that we may feel like we cannot even control, the God is calling us to do something. How should we be really responding? How have you responded? Since the death of George Floyd, what have you done? Have you prayed to God since you've been, um, since ENC closed because of COVID? Have you gone to a protest? I know I have. How have you been responding? Well, I'm going to talk about a, in this devotional a couple ways that I have been responding and how you can be responding. And then later on in this chapel, you're here, you will hear from panelists who explain what the Christian response looks like to them. So when the Bible says that we need to learn to do right, one of the first things that I think about is, what does it look like to be right? Like what is right? What is right in a time of so much uncertainty? Like, God, literally, like, what is right? Is following you right? Which we know it is. Is going to a protest right? Or staying home right? Or putting on our mask right? Like, what is right when so many, have, so many people have opinions on what that is? Seek justice? What does justice actually even look like? The Bible talks about how we serve a God who is just, and he wants us to be fighting for justice. But in what ways should we be fighting for justice? We just got news that Breonna Taylor, um, the officers who killed Breonna Taylor um, basically didn't get indicted for actually killing the unarmed black woman who was sleeping in her bed. And in a situation like this, God, what is right? Like, is the right thing for us to do is just pray to you and nothing else? Is the right, is the way we seek justice 
just going to protest and nothing else? Is it just voting and nothing else? Like, what are we... I don't know about you guys, but I often find myself in a spot where I'm like, what am I supposed to do in the midst of all of this? And it's funny because the Bible tells us exactly what to do. It tells us to defend the oppressed. It tells us to speak up for those who are being oppressed. How are you guys speaking up? For me, I... For me, I have always found myself in a place where I never really wanted to speak up. I never wanted to be the person that everybody really called on to do anything. And I know there's probably some people in the room right now who are thinking, I know her and she always is talking or she's always doing something. But it's only because of God that I speak up and that I do the things that I do. It's only because of God that I defend the oppressed in America. It's only because of God that I do what I think and what the Bible tells me is right. To speak up for those who are in cages, to speak up for those who are being killed by po the very people who are supposed to protect us. It's only because of God that I act. Why do you act? Or do you do nothing? The Bible continues, and it, and it tells us to take up the cause of the fatherless and plead the case of the widow. How are you defending the oppressed? How are you taking up the cause? How are you pleading the case? For me, what I did was, over the summer, in the summer of George Floyd, Breonna Taylor, and Ahmaud Arbery, I, along with um, Dr. Vicki Scout and Pastor Matt Thomas, we hosted a a prayer vigil and rally because we knew that we needed to do something. We knew that the response of a Christian wasn't just to sit back and do nothing and continue to let black people believe that their life didn't matter. We knew that the way we should respond could just be doing a rally slash vigil at the beach where only 30, what, with 300 people, 300 like-minded people, and just being like, God, we know that the Bible also says, let justice flow like a river. So we did that, and now we're all a part of one of the biggest groups in Quincy right now called Quincy for Transformative Change. We co-lead or, 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 or are on the leadership team for that. We started a group called Quincy for Justice because we knew that the Bible says we're supposed to defend and we're supposed to take up our crosses and we're supposed to take up the cause. And taking up the cause doesn't mean that we just allow these things to continue to happen. Taking up the cause means that sometimes you put your own self out there just to do the work that God is calling you to do. And my question for you today is, what is God calling you to do? How is God asking you to respond to wildfires in California, to the deaths of the deaths of people because of COVID-19? How is God calling you to respond when you get the news that the people who killed Breonna Taylor did not even get convicted? How is God calling you to move? And I know that 2020 has been crazy. And there's so much going on and you could possibly overwhelm. I'm overwhelmed all the time. I always often feel like, man, I'm hopeless. Like not hopeless because I always put my hope in Christ. But sometimes I feel like, Lord, where is my joy? Where is my strength? Where is my help? But it's in those moments that God is calling us to continue to push. It's in those moments that we continue to seek justice and that we continue to do what's right. And we continue to take up the cause and we continue to plead the case. We don't stop just because we feel like, oh, no justice is being won. What if we just stop? What if Martin Luther King Jr. just stopped? What if Malcolm X just stopped? What if Nelson Mandela just stopped? 
What if Jesus Christ would have just stopped when he got on the cross? Before he got on the cross, he could have literally just been like, you know what? At the snap, I'm just going to make all this go away. But he didn't. He did what he thought was right. What he knew was right. And even still in the midst of that, he also prayed. Even still in the midst of that, he also acted. Even still in the midst of that, he didn't give up. He knew he was going to that cross to die for you and me. And just like Jesus Christ, our, our example, I too will not give up. And neither shall you. And neither should you. We all have to sometimes do things that are uncomfortable. We all have to sometimes continue the good fight and cause good trouble and I just encourage people who are out there every day protesting and marching and and are dealing with people who are like counter protesters or people who don't get it because I know I've been dealing with that there are people who just don't get it and I just encourage you to keep pushing I encourage you to keep loving. And I know that it's hard to love people who literally, literally would rather see you die or see you suffer. But God calls us to love. Love our neighbor as ourselves. I'm out there all the time because I'm loving my neighbor. I'm loving Breonna Taylor. I'm loving George Floyd. I'm loving Mike Brown Jr. I'm loving Trayvon Martin. I'm loving Emmett Till. You Christians, we can't sit here and say that we love our neighbor, but when our neighbors are dying from the, the people who are supposed to protect them, we do nothing. We can't sit here and say that we're following the Bible when in Isaiah chapter 117 tells us to learn to do what's right, to seek justice, defend the oppressed, take up the cause of the fatherless, Plead the case of the widow. This is all telling us to act. The Bible in so many different ways. It's all over the Bible. Does it tell, call us Christians to act? So I just encourage you to act. And I, and I encourage you not to get weighed down by the whole, oh, black lives matter, all lives matter. No. Christians, we need to do better. God just calls us to act. God calls us to, to stand up for those who are being oppressed. In America, that's black people. We need to be out there. We need to be seeking justice. And also understand that like what my calling is may not be everyone's calling. It may be that your calling is to open up a business. It may be that your calling is to support black businesses. It may be that your calling is to lead protests and rallies. It may be that your calling is to be a lawyer. It may be that your calling is to be a doctor and stop um, so many black mothers from dying when they're giving birth. It may be your calling to be a pastor and from the pulpit you're saying, I love my black Like, I love my black brothers and sisters. I love the black people in my church. Your calling may not look like my calling, and my calling may not be look like your calling, but we are all called. And yeah, sometimes it gets hard, but even in the midst of that, Romans 12, 1 through 2 says, um, offer your body as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. Do not conform to the patterns of this world. However, you're supposed to have a renewed and changed mind for Christ. This is what it looks like to offer up your body as a living sacrifice. It's to act. It's to do right, to seek justice, to defend the oppressed, and to take up the cause of the fatherless and plead the case of the widow. So my question is, how would you respond?